And welcome back everyone again. I'm Jeff Hollinger now to decision 2020 election day is 12 days away and we are where Atlanta speaks and that is why we are talking to voters tonight about the issues that they care about most. Joining me right now are Republicans and Democrats. Jackson and G are two Democrats and the Republican voters are Michael and Milt. We want to thank you guys for joining us. We really appreciate it tonight. You know, I like to begin this the way that we do with uh, politicians. Give me about a 15 second view of how you view this election here coming up in the weeks ahead. Give me a sense of that and let's let's begin right now with you, Mr. Faw. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Jackson Faw and I'm a recovering Republican. I've been sane and clean since November 8th, 2016. Um, I think that the coming weeks are going to show a huge success, a blue wave across the United States. I think we're going to take both houses, obviously the presidency. Of course, it's a little bittersweet, Jeff, because Mitch McConnell uh, is apparently going to be successful in robbing us of our rightful Supreme Court pick. All right, Jackson, uh, thank you. We appreciate it. We appreciate your thoughts, your observations. Gia Compton, how about you as well? Give me, give me a quick overview and don't make it a filibuster. Make it quick. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. I'm glad to be here. I believe this election is going to prove to be one of the most important ones that we've had for um, national office in, in decades. Where we stand is at a precipice of the America that we have and the America that we can be. So I have been heavily involved in following all of the issues because I believe in, in the America that can be. All right, so those are the Democrats. Let's set the table now for the Republicans. Milt Thomas, if you would give us your view. Thanks, Jeff, for having me. Um, I think this election is not gonna go the way the polls predict. I think the polls are where they, where they were in 2016. Nothing's changed about them. I think they're trying to convince us that the country swayed so far uh, in favor of Biden so that whenever Trump wins, he will be accused of robbing the country of the election. Michael Gargiola, how about you? Would you give us your view of this as well? Thank you, Jeff. I think you'll see a similar situation to 2016, the populist vote uh, going to Biden. Um, and I think Trump will win the Electoral College. I think Republicans will retain uh, the Senate. And I would say the House is pretty up for a toss up. but. Uh, I certainly appreciate the opportunity to share some opinion and, and uh, the Republican viewpoint of things tonight. All right, how about you guys? Have you all voted early or are you waiting to vote until November? Milt, how about you? Have you voted? I've already voted. How about you, Jackson? Have you voted? Yes, sir, State Farm Arena and it was a breeze. Gia, how about you? Any problems? I will be voting this week, but I've been looking at my polling place and things seem to be going really smoothly. Michael, how about you? You have voted, yes? I voted two days ago in Gwinnett. It took about an hour. Do you believe that this election is the most important of your lifetime? Michael, you're younger than all of these, <laughs> all of these guys that are here tonight. Give, uh, me, give yeah. me a sense of how you view this. Stack this up in your own mind. Tell me what you think is at stake. Yeah, as a millennial, I, I think this is a very important election. I think what's on the ballot here is vision for our country. I think what's missing from politics is millennial energy. I think that's going to change a lot of the, the tide that uh, I think Americans feel right now. There's a lot of polarization. Uh, I think over the next 10 to 12 years, you'll see more millennials get involved and take um, the foundation that's been built over the last 250 plus years and carry that forward. Jackson, you're an older guy, kind of like me, I suppose. You're younger than I am. I, I hate calling you an older guy. We'll call me an older guy. But <laughs> but you've, you've voted in past elections. Give me your sense where this stacks up as far as your lifetime as an American voter. Yeah, uh, no offense taken, Jeff. My first vote was for Ronald Reagan in 1980. So, yes, I've been around a long time. I think this is unquestionably the most important election ever. Um, what's at stake outside of the policy issues is civility. What we've done is we brought a, a TV show clown into the office who's treated it as such. One of the first things he did was to take us out of the Paris Climate Accord. Uh, from there, proceeded to destroy over 100 environmental regulations. All right, Jackson, and, thank you. Gia, how, how about you as far as Let's talk about social justice. Let's talk about the movement that we have seen this summer. How do you think it plays in this vote? Is it, are, are you surprised to see how it's manifested now as opposed to maybe what it might have been a year ago? 
I'm not surprised um, in how it's manifested. And I think that's largely because I do um, involve myself in a lot of places where um, people of, of Michael's age range and, and younger um, are present. And so I've had the opportunity to hear their passion. Um, I do um, find hope and their desire to be involved. But I know there's a lot of hurt there. Um, I think that it will be a catalyst for many to come forward um, and continue to be involved in the political process and to come out to the polls. Milt, how about you? Give me your sense of social justice and the reckoning that has come forth here in the United States. Frame it in the context of your Republican politics. Uh, I think, first of all, Jeff, there's no such thing as social justice. That's just justice. Once you add an adjective in front of justice, you don't get any justice at all. This is just more of the left spin and trying to make something that doesn't exist. What sort of life experiences have you have that have shaped that view? It's just common sense, for one thing. Uh, uh, and I will call and raise you and Jackson on who's the oldest. My first <laughs> vote was for, my first vote was for uh, Jimmy Carter. Yep. And, and I've, I've voted Republican ever since. My first uh, vote was, uh, I think, Alf Landon and FDR, so I'm older than all of you guys. <laughs> ja Jackson, give me a sense of, of your own life experience as to why that you have shifted from being a, a Reagan Republican in 1980, 40 years ago. I, I looked at your Facebook page earlier today, and, and you are a card-carrying Democrat uh, <laughs> uh, in a very strong and stout way, supporting your party and all that it believes and adheres toward. Uh, well, you know, Jeff, first of all, my life experiences have been shaped by growing up as a white Southerner. So when it comes to social justice, uh, for example, I have to admit and realize that I've had a life of privilege comparatively. I live in a uh, People's Town neighborhood in Atlanta. So I live in a uh, uh, majority minority neighborhood. Um, and I've got a, 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 a label that I wear that says that just because I'm a redneck doesn't mean I voted for that SOB uh, because I'm going to be judged by that. Uh, Jeff, I'd say just real quickly regarding my change, the world has changed, the Republican Party has changed, and I have to admit that I've changed. And Michael, how about you? How do you see all of this as a younger man, the experience with your friends? How do you view your take on American life uh, in terms of politics? I think uh, growing up in Scottsdale, predominantly black area, uh, seeing just how business is, is built with my family. I'm a, I'm a proud business owner now. We have 13 people on our team. Half our team is either not in America or what we would call a minority. Um, so we, I, I think as millennials, uh, appreciate um, just a broad diversity of, of thought. Um, I'd like to think that we are getting less colorblind, less issue blind on, on kind of what we discriminate each other on. Um, maybe that's not so much the case in kind of getting at some of the problems that we're having. America might be going backwards in the sense of racism and not forwards. Um, I think if if we make everything so raised, you know, this is this is this particular race is this, this is that, it becomes uh, difficult for. Uh, America to move forward in a way that uh, I think millennials can really get behind. And I think there's a lot of frustration with millennials right now, to Gia's point, in the sense that um, older America has gotten us to this polarity. And um, All right, some new energy can probably help. All right, time is fleeting, so give me a, a view into all of your crystal balls. We have about 15, 20 seconds each for you. Gia, start it. What are we going to see the day after the election? What's your view? How do you think it's going to look, not only in the presidential election, but here in Georgia? And again, our time is brief. I believe that we're going to see a huge change um, across elections across this country. I believe that we will see um, a wave of blue. Um, but in that wave of blue, I believe that we will find that people feel galvanized to stay involved. Milt, how about you? Give me your view, about 15 seconds, if you would. I, I, I think uh, Trump is going to take it. If, I will say that if Biden wins, I think it'll be by a narrow margin. If Trump wins, it'll be by a landslide. And I think if Trump wins, we're going to see a lot of unrest for quite a while. Milt, Michael, Republicans, thank you. Gia, Jackson, Democrats, we can all agree on at least a civil discourse here on the Big 36 where news is king. So <laughs> thank you again. We may not agree on candidates and politics, but this we can agree on. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you, Joe. All right.